check this out, 26% of teens have prediabetes or diabetes. That's one out of four. Wow. Isn't that quite That's high? crazy, yeah. It's the worst in the world. It, yeah, that, it seems ridiculous, especially because um, with social media and the internet, people are so much more educated, I would think, on food, and we have all these, you know, organic is coming up and all these uh, alternatives and things like that, that the situation would be worse. Is it worse or is it? It's, it's really bad. In okay. fact, um, this the United States has the most high fructose corn syrup of any place in the world, too, which we'll come back to that. Don't let me forget. Okay. Um, so we're looking at the sugar, and this is a sugar cube, okay? One and a half of these equal one teaspoon, okay? Okay. Sugar cubes. So uh, Snickers bar, for example, has 10.8 cubes. Okay, this is a, this is Snickers bar. Right, that's so much sugar. An average person per day consumes about 30 to 31 teaspoons of sugar a day. Now this is. It takes two, like one and a half to equal one teaspoon. So that's so, yeah, a little over two teaspoons. Yeah, yeah, this is right here. Right. So we're dealing with a tremendous amount of sugar going in our bodies. 30 yeah. of those. Go ahead. So let's just take this thing right here. This. Don't mind me. So did you realize that an average American consumes all of this every two weeks? No. Yeah, that's crazy. This is about 400 teaspoons. Every That's insane. Two weeks. So where are they getting that? If they're, they're not eating it. donuts and lollipops. Well, it's it's liquid candy. It's soda. It's juice. It's in all the hidden sugars like bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, waffles, pancakes, muffins, juice. Like I said. Right. It's a tremendous sorry. amount. I'm just demoing. You're this. just playing. So incredible, incredible. So. Let's just take a look at a, a This is only this is this is only like a little more than 10 teaspoons. Maybe 12 teaspoons. Yeah. So every day the average American has three times that. Yeah. That's a lot of sugar. It's incredible. Yeah. Coca-Cola has 13 cubes. Okay. Red Bull is 11. Sprite, right? Mm -hmm. it's supposed to be healthier. 13 cubes a day. I mean per per uh, container. Mountain Dew is 18 cubes. Wow. In one 12 ounce can. Now, Lucky Charms, have you ever had that cereal before? I you grew up on it. Lucky Charms. Love it, right? And um, what were the other ones? Lucky oh, Charms that. and. Uh, Cocoa Puffs. No, the ones with the marshmallows. Life. I don't know. It's all the mu Boo uh, Count. Yeah, all yeah. those. Lucky Charms is 14 cubes of sugar. Okay. Now, a third. Per third, serving. Yeah. Per, per container. So you have to actually multiply how many servings serving. in a box, mm -hmm. which is probably about 15 or 16. Uh, Gatorade, 32 ounces of Gatorade is 22 of these cubes. Wow, right Gatorade. Gatorade. It's sugar water. So, what is, so Gatorade is supposed to be a health drink really? or a fitness, a fitness drink, right? This whole concept of you're burning up your sugar, so you have to put it back. It's just totally crazy. But I thought drinks like that, fitness drinks, were to rehydrate you. Well, they have to throw a little salt, a little potassium in, and that's, that's their electrolytes. They don't have all the electrolytes. You have, like, there's no, hardly any potassium. There's no magne magnesium. So don't get me started. <laughs> uh, so now juice. Let me just take juice, like grape juice, orange juice. That's supposed to be healthy, right? Right. It's right. natural. Well, it's uh, basically we have a little more than one cube per ounce, okay, of sugar. So Great. basically, this is in everything. So if you say you have a glass of juice for breakfast, mm -hmm. you're getting that. Yeah. And then you have a soda at lunch. Maybe you have several sodas a day. But then what about things like, um, how do you factor in condiments and... Oh, ketchup. Here, here's what you do. When you read labels, the first thing you want to look at is the first ingredient. That's the majority of the product. So if it says high fructose corn syrup, you know you're getting the majority of it high fructose corn syrup. The second thing you look at, Karen, yeah. is the sugar grams. All right? Well, how many grams of sugar? So it might see, like ice cream, for example, you might see 30 grams of sugar. Then you look at the serving size. The serving size is like 
three-fourths of a cup or half of a cup. Then you have to multiply how many serving sizes in that container. So in a pint, there's four serving size times the total. So it's actually, you know, it's not like... And who eats a pint. serving size of anything, really? I mean, I, I almost, I want to buy a box of cereal so we can just see how much is a serving size. It's probably like three quarters of a cup or something. I mean, that's a really little amount. And people usually just fill a bowl. Same okay. with ice cream, right? So you might be having four serving sizes in one sitting. Oh, let's take salad dressings. Like you have massive amount in the low fat salad dressings, you have massive sugar per teaspoon. So if you calculate it out, it's like the whole thing is just like sugar water. So you really got to read the labels and just make sure that sugar gram is at close to zero as possible. Yeah. Well, it's so easy to make salad dressing. You don't have to. You don't have to buy salad dressing. It's so easy to make salad dressing. But if you're going to, you have to really look at the sugars. And, you know, one of the things that I was shopping for a couple of weeks ago were bouillon cubes. And I... There's sugar in that? Couldn't believe... What? Well, there's actually a lot of crap inside of a bouillon cube. I thought it was just, uh, you know, dried broth. I just said, that's it. I just started making my own broth when I needed it. Incredible. We were recently at a wedding and we, uh, right across the street, we go to this little store. It's like a little shopping store, right? Mm -hmm. And we were just observing all the products in there. Like that was, that was mind blowing just to look from the viewpoint of every single thing had mm -hmm. sugar in it. I mean, way more than I thought. Mm -hmm. I tried to find something without sugar. So what does that tell us? It tells us that there's not a lot of awareness out there with sugar. Mm -hmm. Or, Sugar's getting added for whatever reason to everything. I mean, you can't buy brown mustard without sugar. Why? Mustard. It's mustard. Yeah, I know. It's so mustard. You, they put sugar in meat, and it's hidden as uh, like dextrose or maltose, Gravies. which is a synthetic sugar. Go, so. go to any like uh, well, any place in the freezer section, and I challenge you to to find. Oh, the processed pot foods? Pot pie. Oh, yeah, all the um, processed foods. I'm not talking about desserts. Pot pie, um, and pinatas, um, pot stickers. I mean, anything, I think. You know, I look and I go, oh, here's a nice wild-caught fish with a pecan, parmesan, the crusted. Oh, this is perfect. Sugar. It's incredible. Sugar. Let's take French fries. You ever go to McDonald's before? Lately? No, you no. haven't. So I haven't they, been, no. they basically they take this potato, which is a high glycemic index, and then they don't just fry it; they coat it with sugar dextrose. Right, dextrose. So if you combine that amount of sugar with that starch, and then it's deep fried in uh, corn oil or soy oil, which is GMO, you have an interesting product. It, amazing. It's, it's going to spike your insulin so much. And what do people eat with French fries? Ketchup. And well, I eat, I use mayonnaise. People, other people. Other people. Ketchup and I'm sure it's got something with sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, the point is what they ketchup? have a hamburger. They have a hamburger oh. with fries, right? And do they drink something too with that? No, unsweetened iced tea. It is the most deadly combination. No. You got other people. Soda. A soda with a burger with the fries. I mean, that's like a massive insulin spike on steroids. And people are doing it. Mm -hmm. I used to do it. Yeah, well, also, it's like MSG. I mean, there's a lot of different names for sugar, and people don't always know what to look for. MSG is monosodium glutamate. It's a hidden salt. It's a flavor enhancer. It spikes insulin more than sugar. I and didn't know that. Yeah, and it's hidden as modified food starch. And try many other names, actually, right? Yeah. Try, a lot of other names. Try to find... Try to find a food that's processed that doesn't have modified food starch. It's in even cottage cheese unless it's organic. So what's happening in our bodies now is it's rejecting sugar. And to do that, uh, there's a mechanism, a defense mechanism that we've set up in the body, and that is called insulin resistance. But it, don't we want the body to resist sugar? We do. That's a survival mechanism. But what we want to do is not give it sugar. <laughs> but our, if we keep giving it sugar, our body's going to say, oh, really? Well, we're going to shut it down. Mm -hmm. So it starts to develop earplugs in the receptors for insulin. So we start blocking the sugar and insulin to the point where now the body says, 
uh oh, we can't deal with this. So it starts making more and more insulin mm. to try to create the effect. That's what's happening. And insulin resistance is a pre diabetes situation. Okay, so eventually a person becomes a diabetic. I mean, it's like one, one out of three adults, one out of four kids will be a diabetic. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. So now what's going to happen once you're diabetic, it's going to affect four main cells in the body. Okay, Gosh. take take a guess. We're getting technical the, here. Oh yeah. Four cells. Yeah. Like <laughs> brain, brain cell, <laughs> liver cell. Okay, you're getting close. The retina. Oh. That's the eye. <laughs> you were Come thinking on. that, right? You were thinking I, that. I was actually I was gonna say that next. Yeah. The retina. And that's why a diabetic goes blind eventually. Ooh. Yeah. Right. The retina. That makes sense. The next cell effects is the nerves specifically the peripheral nerves, which is the fingertips and the, and the toes, and the bottom of the feet. That's why a diabetic, they have numbness, tingling, and burning. Mm. Guess what happens after that? It, the, the nerves are dying. You get something called gangrene. Right, I've heard of that. That's literally the rotting of your, your toes. And then the feet, you have to chop that off. Oh, yeah. you had to go there. I had to go there. <laughs> I'll give you a visual here. We were having like a really a, nice a demo sugar you, conversation. Yeah, these are just the effects that people just, we're trying to increase the awareness. Mm -hmm. right, right, I so know. Those are two cells. Okay. The next cell is the inner lining on the artery. Okay. Endothelial cell. The endothelial cell. Yeah, it creates inflammation and literally holes on those cells. So that's when the cholesterol comes in, the calcium comes in, uh, and it starts building the clot. Heart attack, stroke. As a side effect of, of the diabetes? Mm -hmm. Sugar. Okay, we got three, right? Oh, the right. Retina, peripheral nerves, heart or arteries, uh -huh. and next one is the kidney cell. I was going to say that. I know you're. I was that. actually going to say that. I would have. I, I would have gotten one right. I picked that up. So, I mean, the long-term effects of diabetes is you're on kidney dialysis. I mean, it's pretty bad. You got to go to the center and get your kidneys filtered. Uh, I think it's every day or every other day or something like that, but it's terrible. It's just like you're constantly, it's painful, and they're, uh, they, it's just a miserable thing. Okay, so that's a horrible life. Yeah. That is a horrible life and a horrible future. And how many kids? One out of every four child, and it's raising two. Okay. The stats are getting worse over time. So, okay, so I get it. That's the good news. That the is the bad, <laughs> the bad news. Now... Here's the thing is, if it's, it's not, you know, environmental, it's got to do with what people put into their bodies. That's totally controllable. Mm -hmm. So this is where you come in. Right. So, so the reason I'm not re recommending everyone go to the American Diabetes Association uh, website, because if you look at their website, they're allowing people to have a lot more sugar than they should have. So they're not, they're not. In our opinion. Right, that's our opinion. Our because opinion. The, the link between so-called science and diabetes, they still don't know what causes it. It's obvious to us, but of course, there's a lot of funding for these uh, institutions, so they can't come out and really say it. But the point is that you, the consumer, can start controlling the amount of sugar that goes in your body. Um, and we see it in all these uh, testimonials, and all these uh, Skype testimonials and videos. We're not claiming it. We're just reporting what people are telling us. These are the conditions I had. I did intermittent fasting. I did ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. I got rid of all the sugar. And now these are my body statistics, you know? Especially for belly fat. I mean, the, the short-term symptoms of insulin resistance is you get tired after you eat. You have to take a nap. That was me, right? Mm, always. Now... Uh, secondly is you get um, craving for uh, carbs, okay, that's a big one. You have urination problems at night, you're getting up, urinating. You have brain fog, vision problems, okay, that's the short-term effects. Long-term effects, belly fat, stroke, fatty liver, Alzheimer's, dementia. Wow. Other than that, you're perfectly fine. <laughs> but that's the point, terrible. The point I wanted to bring up was I had a blood, blood sugar problem and I, I just wanted to have Karen, you, did I not have a blood sugar problem or did I have a blood sugar problem? <laughs> I think you've clearly stated you already did, but yes, you did. Bad. In my 20s. Yes. 
it was so bad, I had to come home, take a nap. The inside of the eyes were all like, it felt like sand and bloodshot. I mean, that went on for years. Mm -hmm. I was exhausted. Yeah. I didn't know what it was. We tried everything. I was doing uh, cleanses, ear candles, what are detoxes. Nothing it's true. was working. I still um, have a photo of him with this ear candle. Actually, that pulled out a little I could thing. probably, yeah. I could probably make some money off that. You probably could. I really could. It's the next trend. But the other thing, too, is uh, <laughs> apple, what about the uh, juice? I was doing juice. I was doing ice cream. And juicing to, to to also. Carrot juice. Juicing like, a I turned, lot. Didn't I apple, turn, like, a different carrot. color, like yeah, orange We yellow. did a lot of juicing. We tried everything. Remember, I mean, certain diets work for certain people. We have strong opinion on things, obviously, because it's what's being forwarded on our channel. But uh, remember when we were uh, just eating vegetables? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know. Some people love this. I'm going to say I don't want to upset anybody in any way. A lot of people feel great eating vegetables. We did this. And I was bruising I don't even know what I was touching. I was bruising. My hair was falling out. He was feeling horrible. Um, Certain people need animal protein. Yeah. And we definitely needed animal protein. Um, we need the meat. Yeah. Well, we would be, <laughs> I was, it was so bad. Everywhere we would go, I would, uh, it was in San Diego. We are driving down the street, and I said, hey, Karen. It says, a yellow building says the health house. Oh, my gosh. Remember that? How can and I like, forget that? And I'm like, let's go. Maybe they can help me. That was the Pull opposite. Up. These people were the opposite. It was like raw milk and meat. Right. So, you know, we weren't feeling great. So we said, okay, we'll try this. So that had its own, you know, that had its own things. But we immediately felt better. Every health food store, we go in there, come out with another remedy. I was trying everything. Was mm -hmm. I not trying everything? Yeah. And I think when we were doing the vegetable thing, it wasn't just that we were eating vegetables. We were eating a lot of pasta at the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that probably was our big issue with feeling so crappy. It wasn't that we were having great big salads and getting very creative. We're doing a lot of beans and a lot of pasta and a lot of rice and a lot of of those things. <clears throat> I had arthritis in my fingers, mm. down my spine. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what drove me to um, research health and then become almost obsessed about it, just teaching it, learning it. And I've been studying it a little bit here and there. Kind of dabbling in it ever since. <laughs> completely, right, completely obsessed. But hey, we're the beneficiaries of that. That's right. Someone right? has to do it, right? Someone has so to I'm, do it. Like, I don't read fiction or, or, what, or nonfiction. Basically, what do I read? Guyton's Physiology. For fun. Um, all things about the uh, the cell, the mitochondria. The latest hot novel on mitochondria. It's fascinating stuff. <sighs> Very Someone, I'm glad that you are that interested. I'm just in into it. I, I know. I'm, I'm just, glad. I'm just fascinating. The effects of this on the mitochondria. And by the way, since you brought that up, <laughs> there's something very interesting about. Okay. Um, you can't even have insulin resistance unless the mitochondria, which is the energy factory in the cell, becomes dysfunctional. So in other words, it's like a pre thing that happens with the mitochondria. If you can keep your mitochondria strong then you can prevent insulin resistance. I'm going to make a t-shirt like that. We should. Mitochondria Keep strong. Keep your mitochondria strong. Right. With but, a big mitochondria fist. But you got to ask me, how do, how do you do oh, that? Oh, how do you do that? That's a good question. No the next sugar. Episode, we'll cover that. Oh, now, I'll tell you now. Cliffhanger. Now, it's, it's, it's vitamin B1. Bum, bum, bum. B1 is protective against diabetes and insulin resistance. But sugar depletes B1. So... If you were to take, uh, like, the nutritional yeast, you can actually improve blood sugars and protect yourself against it. Guess how you, you get a B1 deficiency? Eating too much sugar. And refined grains. Right. Breads, cereal, crackers, Do your biscuits, thing. waffles, pancakes, muffins, donuts. Not donuts. Yeah. It depletes okay. B1. So that's how you're getting a depletion, and then you set yourself up for getting the complications of diabetes peripheral neuropathy, vision, you go blind, gangrene. Other than that, you're totally fine. Good. Yeah. So I'm picking up a theme here. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I have all this data. I'm kind of putting it together that sugar is Slightly bad. not optimum. Right. It's bad. Um, so, you know, so, so this is a little bit of where I come in because, okay, 
I would like to do the, you know, you know how they have these like um, partner swapping, like celebrity spouse swap kind of thing. I almost want to do a challenge and, and let someone come live in our house in my shoes for for a week or two. And Sugar Nazi? <laughs> food Nazi. I know that's really mean. We used to call him that just because it got to be sort of like, what can we eat? They probably get skinny pretty fast. Yeah, but... But the point is, like, not people don't know how to function in life without that. So really, I mean, there are a lot of ways that you can eat. But definitely looking at the sugar in ingredients is one thing. There are a lot of alternative sweeteners out there that you can start to play with, experiment with. There are gobs. I mean, we put recipes out, but there's gobs and gobs of recipes on the Internet. Mm -hmm. And um, cookbooks filled with recipes on uh, ideas of food that you can eat that don't have sugar in them. That's right. So this it starts with awareness, understanding what sugar does, what it is, and making you aware of what you're putting in your body without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. So again, every two weeks, one of these. Mm. Uh, so you're gonna educate your kids. Yeah. So that's really important. The whole family, uh, making sure the whole family's on board, and maybe the whole family isn't gonna be on board at first because they want to have whatever their thing is that they're gonna have, but that one person, a lot of times, it's the woman. Of course who leads the household, right? And um, you get started and make the change and then just stop buying things. Stop bringing things into the house. And it's a gradient. It's not going to happen all overnight, but... Read these right here, Karen. Labels. Wow. Why are we whispering? I don't know. Okay. So do you have any last words of wisdom before we uh, end off? I am filled with wisdom. But no. I, I mean, um, this was cool and uh, good to know about sugar and all of the medical things. The thing that really hits me hard is to see all these kids out there that are obese and that are pre-diabetic. I mean, it's, it's really our responsibility as, as parents and as adults to, yeah. to fix that. So. It's, it's such an easy thing to do and it's unnecessary and I really think I have to, we gotta do something about yeah. it. We'll, we're gonna we'll do something to, locally. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to start to do something We should actually locally. film it, too. I think we're going to film something locally and, and just yeah. help these kids and parents because I know parents don't, they don't want to cause that effect in their kids. They just don't know or they're confused or, you know, they're too well, I'm having agave nectar now instead. Right. Or, or, and how do you feel about agave nectar? Okay, since you brought that up. I brought it up. Do you have another half hour? Um, now, agave nectar is 97% fructose, okay? Fructose um, behaves differently. Like this right here is cane sugar, it's sucrose. Half of this is glucose and half of it is fructose. All you need to know is that the fructose is the really, really bad sugar um, for your um, liver. Because in your cells, you're just picking up glucose. For, you can't pick up fructose. So everything is shunted to the liver and your liver is like freaking out because you're doing this every two weeks. And everything is then has to be converted over to liver fat, fat around the organs, and um, fatty arteries, and all sorts of inflammatory conditions. So mm. uh, fructose is the real deadly one that's creating, if you have belly fat or a liver roll, which is underneath the rib cage, we know um, it's probably from fructose and it's your liver is fatty. So, so agave nectar is, is just off fructose. So they say mm. it's low glycemic, yeah, it might be, but it's going to create the same problem, just a different pathway. Okay. Okay? Okay. On that note, yeah. we'll, we'll see you guys next time. Okay. Thanks for coming out. Right? You too. Thanks for coming out. You're welcome. <laughs>